<laughs> I'm Jonathan Cohen uh, from NVIDIA, uh, my colleague Francesco Cianella, who's going to run, run our demo. Um, super excited to be here. Big crowd. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to talk about something that we released recently called Nemo Guardrails, which is a toolkit for uh, creating guardrails around your large language model. So why do you need guardrails? Well, I think we all are familiar with uh, the difficulty in building an actual application with large language models that the public might interact with. Um, <clears throat> if you're going to actually deploy a large language model, you somehow need to constrain what it can do. You need to monitor what it's saying and who's saying wh who, what people are saying to it, what it's responding. Um, and uh, a guardrail then is just a, uh, what we call anything that monitors this conversation and can steer it in one direction or another. Uh, so broadly speaking, we can think of three kinds of guardrails. There's topical guardrails that attempt to keep a conversation on topic or away from certain topics. So for example, if I have a customer service chat bot, I don't want it to do anything other than answer questions about my product. I don't want it to answer questions about someone else's product or talk about the weather or, or whatever. Um, there's a, a variety of topics uh, that we, people call AI safety. So things like hallucination or toxicity or misinformation. And so detecting whether um, someone is speaking to the, the LLM in the wrong way or the LLM's responses are somehow toxic or um, uh, adverse to the purposes of your deployed chatbot. And, and finally, um, with toolkits like Langchain, uh, we're connecting up these large language models to APIs and allowing them to actually take action. And so this can be a very attractive attack surface for all sorts of cybersecurity threats. Um, and so you certainly want to monitor what people are saying to an LLM and then what calls it's making or what actions it's taking. Um, and so all of these kind of fit broadly under this category of guardrails. And one of the things that we realized as we started trying to build a guardrail system is that it's really a, a topic, uh, sorry, a, a dialogue modeling problem. So you need to understand who's, who's saying what, um, what's the context of the conversation, what's the history of the conversation, What's the purpose of any given interaction? And you're actually monitoring the, the conversation both from the human and the chatbot itself. So this is like a very simple system architecture. So you have a person talking to, um, and more and more it's not just directly to a language model, but to some application like Langchain that's then interfacing with different language models. And Nemo Guardrails sits in between the, the, the person and this application. And so it's using this powerful contextual dialogue engine and monitoring the conversation, and then it can apply guardrails um, and decide what to do. It's very difficult to build one system that can you know, anticipate all the things that may happen. And in fact, the way you deploy your language model might be very different from how someone else is deploying it. And so guardrails is actually a fully programmable toolkit. Um, there's a, a domain-specific language. Uh, it's basically a dialogue modeling language, and you can, we'll show you some examples of that. And so you can use this to describe um, what are the interactions and what are the, what are the guardrails you want? And everything is fully customizable and programmable. It's open source, um, so we released this fully as open source. Uh, it's on GitHub. It's integrated into the Nemo framework, which is an open source framework we've had for several years, um, which is a PyTorch-based toolkit for training and customizing language models, speech models, um, generative AI models of all sorts. Um, it will be part of the uh, NVIDIA Nemo service, but we're not going to really talk about that. Um, the reason we open source this is we certainly are not in any way claiming that we've solved the problem of detecting hallucinations or preventing toxicity. These are very hard problems that uh, people will be working on for a long time. But we wanted to create some kind of repository for all the work people are doing in this area to, to go into one place. Um, I think a fragmented world is, is a lot more difficult to aggregate all the best practices and actually deploy them in production. And so our intention by open sourcing this was, um, this is an area we're doing research in, and so we wanted a place to put our research, but we're also hoping that the community finds this toolkit useful and the, the framework that we've built useful and adds their own implementations and their own types of guardrails into it. It's all built on Langchain, so the implementation of a guardrail and, and, and even the, the way you interface to the underlying language model is all built based on Langchain. So it's very easy to integrate new ideas or, or new models into it. So with that, we're going to show you a live demo. Hopefully, uh, you can read the screen here. So we have a simple server that's just, we implemented a very simple chatbot. Um, can people read that, I hope? Yeah. Should we zoom in? It's OK. 
That's good. Okay. Um, so we, we implemented a simple chatbot. Uh, this is the language model under the hood is Text DaVinci 3 from OpenAI. And we connected it up to a, a knowledge base, which has documentation about NVIDIA's HR benefits. And so the intention of this chatbot is that it should answer questions about NVIDIA HR benefits. And along the way, we want to avoid different pitfalls. So we can just start out asking it, what can you do? And it will respond, assuming our internet connection is working. Yes. As an AI, I can provide you with a wide range of services, answering queries, offering guidance, providing relevant information about NVIDIA benefits. So this actually is defined in, this, um, in the way that we specified our guardrails. We told this chatbot what it can do. And if someone asks it what it can do, we're not even necessarily sending this to the, um, to the language model itself. We just know the answer. So now let's ask it a question that it should be able to answer. We're going to be adopting a child. Can I claim any of the adoption expenses? The guardrail system here is recognizing that this is a factual question. So it's going to send this query to the knowledge base, get back some hopefully relevant information, and then pass that along with the query to text DaVinci 3 or the language model to formulate a response. And so now we have a, a relatively detailed response written by text DaVinci 3 based on the information in our knowledge base. Uh, yes, NVIDIA, oh, sorry, jumping at me. Yes, NVIDIA offers adoption assistance program, which can provide unlimited reimbursement and so on. And so this is a factual answer. Um, so let's ask it a question that we don't want it to answer. Um, so I can ask it something like, um, how many NVIDIAs adopted children last year? Now, we probably don't even have this information in our knowledge base, but even if somehow this system had access to that, we wouldn't want to answer because it's confidential. Um, and so our guardrail system is actually detecting that someone's asked a confidential question, and it's intercepting that question. It's not even sending it to the language model. It's simply responding with this canned response. I'm sorry, I'm not able to respond as that's confidential information. We can ask it something uh, that it doesn't know. So we, we built this knowledge base, and, and uh, I know that this next question, um, is there a support group for parents of adopted children? There's no information relevant to that in the knowledge base that it has access to. And what we don't want it to do is hallucinate an answer. Um, and so again, we recognize it's a factual question. We look it up in our knowledge base. We allow the language model to formulate a response. But we're applying a, a, a guardrail that's checking for the groundedness of any response. And so it's looking at what did the language model say and what information did we have in our knowledge base and are these things consistent? And if not, it's actually filtering the language model's response and, and replying again with this canned response. I'm not sure. I recommend you talk to the HR representative or your manager for support. All of this logic is, again, fully programmable in, in this programming language um, that we've developed. So let's ask it uh, another question. I'm talking to an NVIDIA chatbot. I can ask it questions about NVIDIA. So let me ask it a financial question. What was NVIDIA's uh, operating income in 2021 Q3? Now, I have no idea if it knows the answer to this. I don't know if Text DaVinci 3 knows this, but all I know is it's not relevant. So as we've built this chatbot today, um, we do not yet have a guardrail. Uh, it's going to pass this question on. It recognizes it's a factual question. It'll allow the language model to respond. And I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's false. I don't know if it hallucinated that. But I definitely don't want it to answer questions like this. So let's show you the actual um, program that's defining these guardrails. Uh, maybe we can, uh, yeah, sorry. Maybe we zoom out a little bit or close the. Uh, <laughs> there we go. So this programming language is a it's a domain specific language called Colang, uh, which we developed, and and the guardrail system has an interpreter and a runtime for this language. And it's a dialogue modeling language. It's actually a pretty rich language. You can have conditionals and control flow and all sorts of things. Um, but it has two fundamental concepts. One is something that we call a canonical form. And a canonical form is simply a simplified paraphrase of a concept. And so you can define a canonical form, and then you use these canonical forms as the hook for your guardrail um, to trigger the logic in your, in your guardrail flows. So we're going to define a user's can canonical form, define user, ask about financial results. So that's a canonical form, ask about financial results. And we can give it a bunch of examples. You can give it as many as you want. The more examples you give it, the more accurately it will um, detect that this is relevant. Um, but you don't even, if you just want to build something as a proof of concept, you, you really only need to give it one or two examples, and it understands uh, what's happening. So what was NVIDIA's EPS last year? How much does NVIDIA spend on R&D? Examples of this canonical form. We can also define canonical form forms for the output. So in this case, we're defining a bot form, explain, can't discuss financial results. I'm sorry, I'm not a financial bot. 
So now that we have these financial forms, we can define, in this case, a very simple flow. Um, and this is a guardrail is a flow in, in the, um, this language. So we're going to define a flow, which is if the user asks about financial results, the bot will explain it can't discuss financial results. And then further, the bot will inform of its capabilities, which is a canonical form we've already uh, defined in this file. So with that, we've now created a new guardrail. And you can see what's nice about this language is it's very, um, very natural language. Like, again, it, it is a programming language. It does have like, you know, rigorous definition and flow of control. But these, these conditionals and these predicates for what do you do when and what, what gets triggered is all based on this very um, natural way of framing things. So we can restart our server. And we can ask it this question again. And now hopefully that guardrail will get triggered. It will detect that this was a question about financial results. And it will respond with our, uh, again, our canned result, our canned response. I'm sorry I'm not a financial bot. As an AI, I can provide you with a wide range of services, and so on. Um, and so this is an example of guardrails and how easy it is to build your own. My expectation is that if someone were to really use this in a real system, you would, you would actually do a lot of R&D, a lot of development, a lot of iterations, testing it um, you know, under all sorts of adversarial conditions, um, which is, in fact, one reason that it's interesting to talk at weights and biases. Um, you definitely need this kind of a platform for testing and iterating and, and running experiments. And I think if you think of the, the, the system holistically, not just the model, but you have your model, you have your guardrails, you have all these components. You actually need to test that whole thing and run experiments on the, on the complete system. Uh, if we go back to the slides. Oops, slideshow. Great. So in our open source, um, uh, uh, the, the open source toolkit on GitHub, um, we have examples of a number of different guardrails. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not claiming we, we've solved any of these problems particularly. A lot of them are implemented actually using language models to check if different conditions are met. Um, but under the hood, uh, like I said, it's, it's able to call anything from Langchain. So any model or any logic you can implement in Langchain, you can actually use as a guardrail. Um, and I think if you were to build a very, if you wanted to build a very robust system, in fact, you'd probably have very complicated, many layered uh, kinds of checks, and, and it could be quite computationally expensive. Um, and so it's kind of an interesting case where you can have this trade off between lots and lots of computation to have a really really rock solid um, system or something maybe that's cheaper and, and, and more flexible and maybe not as secure. Um, so as I said in the beginning, there's th broadly three kinds of guardrails and we have examples of all these and, and kind of a cookbook uh, in, in our uh, code base. Topical guardrails, there's examples of like querying a knowledge base like I showed you here, staying on topic. Um, you can use these, the, these canonical forms to set a conversational tone, detect, notice that someone told a joke or someone said something in a sarcastic manner. Um, safety guardrails, so, so there's examples of ethical response, fact-checking guardrails, hallucination detection. Um, and then for security, we have some simple, um, we designed a simple security model, and, and so we can do things like allow list certain APIs from Langchain that, that, that conform to our security model. Um, we have examples of how to do safe execution of code, um, and then things like detecting jailbreak attempts. And I think this area is going to be a a really fast moving area in terms of computer security research, detecting and mitigating these kinds of responses. Um, so I think that's all we have today, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, have a great conference. Thank you.